ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستكفيه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له رب العزه والجلال الواحد الاحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الاسلام وتادى الامانه ونصح الامه وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى اتاه اليقين فصلوات ربنا وسلامه عليه وعلى اهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته الغر الميامين ومن بهداه مقتدى وبسنته مستنى الى يوم الدين ونسال الله جل في علاه ان يجعلنا معهم في سرتهم انه بالمؤمنين رؤوف الرحيم ما بعد فمعشر المسلمين والمسلمات اوصيكم كما اوصي نفسي المذنبه اولا بتقوى الله عز وجل في السر والعلن indeed praises to allah we praise him and thank him seek assistance from him and take refuge with him against the wrong of ourselves against the wrong of our actions i testify that none has the right to be worshiped but allah alone creator uncreated without partner without son without sharer in his dominion now i testify that muhammad is the seal of his messengers and the last of his prophets sent with guidance for all of humanity until the end of days upon him his brother messengers before him his noble household and companions and those who follow his way in goodness and aspire to do so after him be the fullest of peace and complete blessing until the end of days servants of allah i remind you as i remind myself to hold fast to the remembrance of allah indeed in his remembrance do hearts find rest when the quran tells us الذين امنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله الا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب those who believe and their hearts find rest in the remembrance of allah and here listen carefully الا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب it is only in allah's remembrance in the remembrance of the creator that hearts find rest when the quran tells us about this it instructs us to how to achieve and find peace in our lives and in our times the, when musa alayhi salam encounters the <coughs> the very enigmatic character of al khadir and al khadir is a mysterious figure surah al kahf which we recite every friday is dedicated to uh, one section of that is dedicated to recording for us the journey of Musa alayhi salam when Allah azza wa jalla tells him to go to the place at the meeting point of the two oceans where there is a servant atainahu min ladunna ilma and we have granted him knowledge from us so Musa alayhi salam makes his way to to this place and when he finally encounters him the story is lengthy and inshallah you should be familiar with it and if you're not that make this something that you do over the next couple of days pick up surah al kahf for translation or a tafsir and you can read just even in translation something about uh, in sahih bukhari we have the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam commenting on this expanding on this incident but when he first meets al khadir al khadir has his face covered he's lying on a rock and musa comes to him and says assalamu alaik and al khadir's response in sir wa alaykum assalam which is the normal response when someone greets you with peace his response is anna bi ardik assalam where is this peace in your land because assalamu alaykum isn't just a hello or a good morning it's what it becomes is we we say i'm thinking it's a greeting but it's more than a greeting assalamu alaykum is both a dua as well as a declaration and a statement it is a dua i wish peace upon you it is a declaration nothing from me towards you puts you at jeopardy or risk i will present no harm to you i bring i come to you in peace and it is a statement there needs to be peace upon us we have to actively work to contribute to peace this is a statement of intent 
We're not passive. We just sit at home or, or get on with our lives and go to work and go to, uh, you know, things. And then, and, and, and hope that the world sorts itself out. Assalamu alaikum is a statement of intent. I intend to be, get busy with, to busy myself with the business of bringing about peace. Because this earth deserves peace. And hearts deserve peace. And Allah gives us a formula for that. That is in God's remembrance. And when the world is in need of peace, it is only in God's remembrance coming back to the world, coming back to the individuals that make up this world, that the earth re-enters a state of peace. The Quran tells us, whether on land or sea, Corruption is a manifestation of the workings of human hands. On land or sea, corruption and mischief and, and chaos and these problems here and troubles there and all of this turmoil is simply the, the result of human hands. Allah doesn't send it to us except there is something in it for us. And then the Quran tells us very clearly about the, the purpose of bala or trial. Allah says, we will make them taste of something of the lesser punishment, that is the trials and tribulations of here and now. Whether that's in yourselves, in your families, in your communities, in your nation, in your political and economic situation, globally and internationally, if you're experiencing discord and, and tribulation, Allah says, I give you that to taste. Why? Before the greater punishment from which there is no U-turn or, or, or rescue. So that just yet now you may make your way back. Pain has a function and pain has a really important function. When you have a toothache, that pain is, is it's excruciating. It takes over everything. It takes over, you can't sleep, you can't eat, you can't sit still, your, the pain is throbbing throughout your jaw, you, you just need, and then you go to the dentist, and you say, I'm in so much pain, and there is a tooth that is rotten, and that is very rude, a, a, an infection has set in, and it's eating away at the, the roots of your teeth. And the nerves are picking up the pain from that. And that is being sent to your brain, and it is making it impossible for you to ignore it. Because you need to attend to it. There's a reason that you feel that pain. Pain is your friend. Because pain wakes you up to something you were oblivious to. But had you remained oblivious to it, it would have wreaked great harm throughout you. It would have caused you great distress. Much larger problems than anything. Right now a tooth can be taken out. And then it's a, your, the pain immediately is gone. A tooth is removed and suddenly there's relief. And so pain comes to say something needs to be gone. Something needs to be let go of. Something, you need to jettison something. And you do that and you come back to relief. And often it's the burdens that we carry that take the place of our purpose and objective. These are the days we're coming up in the next few days. The days of Dhul Hijjah will arrive. And Dhul Hijjah, the whole of the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are sacred days with the culmination of the tenth day as Eid al-Adha, the day of the great sacrifice. It's called that. It's not just a holiday. It's not just a point of celebration. It is a commemoration of the ultimate sacrifice of a father, a mother, a son, all of whom made an individual and then collective decision. We aren't going to allow anything, any love, any goal, any drive or desire get in the way of our relationship with our maker. That has to come first. And when that happens, then suddenly, for centuries and centuries, millennia even, these 10 days are now sacred. The whole of humanity has been making its way to Hajj in these days. Right? Allah says to Ibrahim, announce the Hajj to the people, and they will come, some walking and some on, on lean camels from every narrow and, 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 and uh, distant path. People make their way. People are, right now, there are people who are flying out there. Some people are still going by, by ship. Some people make a road journey, but they're going there to the sacredest place on earth.
from the UK and from Europe, from America, North and South, from Asia and various parts of it, from Africa, from uh, the Far East, from all over the world, people are congregating. And people of every hue and every color, every ethnicity, every language and culture, every background, every economic standing. This is why people are in two towels. Because now you're not in Gucci or Armani. Now you're not in your sportswear or your team colors. Now everyone comes for Allah. And everyone and every other dis distinction and, and, and difference is, is removed before Allah Azza wa Jal. Brothers, please observe silence during the khutbah. It's an obligation during the khutbah to observe silence. And it's important that we remember this. The uh, people from all over the world making their way right now. And we, perhaps, aren't going this year. And maybe, inshallah, it's something that uh, we pray to Allah to accept us for in years to come, if we haven't already been. It is an obligation, the final pillar of Islam, the fifth of the pillars of Islam. So every Muslim who is able, financially and physically able, needs to make that a goal before the time runs out for that. So make that a niyyah. But we, even if you are not able to undertake the journey this year, they used to say, لَقَدْ, لقد uh, سَافَرْتُمْ أَجْسَامًا وَسَافَرْنَا أَرْوَاحًا You've gone with body, but let us go in soul. Let us join you with our spirits. Physically, we're not able to make that journey with you, but our spirits can be with you. And the Prophet of Allah وسلم, tells us something about that. These days are sacred not just for the people in Saudi Arabia who have made their way to Mecca, who have made their way from here to Jeddah, who have made their way to al Madina al Munawwara, and then they're going to be visiting the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and making their way to, 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 to the Haram. It's not just sacred for them. The Quran tells us, uh, the Prophet of Allah وسلم, said, ما من أيام العمل الصالح فيها أحب إلى الله من هذه الأيام. There are no days on earth in which good deeds are more loved by Allah. And he appreciates them more, and he is more pleased with them than these ten days. These are from, and this begins the first of Dhul Hijjah. From the first until the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, these are days of, 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 and although we say the first ten days of Eid, and the tenth is a day of celebration, a day of feasting, and a day of rejoicing. But it's a day of rejoicing because of what comes before it. Ramadan came and it went, and that was literally two months ago. And Ramadan came and it forced us to physically detox in order that we spiritually start to take in again and, 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 and nourish ourselves and grow and develop. This comes to remind us about the purpose of life. Don't let any other goal, any other uh, focus, any other love be greater than the love for the one who gave you all that you have. Because he created all of it for you in order that you become for him. This is why these days come. Everything, that else, everything else that can be a distraction, that can be something that vies for your, uh, your, your, your attention, that's something that demands your time and your commitment. And it's important that we do those things. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, or he affirmed when Salman said uh, to, 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 uh, to the companion who was spending the whole night, he wanted to spend the whole night worshipping. He had no interest in his uh, relationships with his wife, with his, his family relation. He was so devout in, and focused on worshipping. Salman said, Inna li jasadika alika haqqa, wa li aynika alika haqqa, wa li ahlika alika haqqa, wa li rabbika alika haqqa, fa a'ti kulladhi haqqa haqqa. Your body has a right over you. Your eye has a right, your wife has a right over you, and your Lord has a right over you. So give each what it, what it requires. Don't, don't become, and he was saying this to somebody who was worshipping Allah so much that he had no time for his wife, he had no time for his food and drink, he had no time for rest. He told him moderation, and the Prophet heard this, and he said, Sadaqa Salman, Salman was right when he said that. But Islam came to tell us, so it doesn't come to say, denounce everything. It says the Prophet of Allah said, Al Muslim الذي يخالط الناس ويصبر على أذاه خير من المسلم الذي لا يخالط الناس ولا يصبر على أذاه. The believer who engages with humanity, with the community, with society, the believer who is in and amongst his community, and in the process of doing that, there are times when people say things and do things that they annoy you, and then you ex exercise sabr. You have the opportunity to be patient. 
He is better than the one who stays aloof and stays in his own hermitage somewhere or away. The Prophet said, La rahbaniyata fil Islam. We don't do monasticism in Islam. We don't divorce the world and turn our back to it to devout, to become devout and, and worship God only. We worship Allah Azza wa Jal in the masjid and on the prayer mat and we worship Him with society and with humanity. And yet, as Ramadan comes to physically detox and spiritually nourish and, and revive our souls, these days come to make our hearts pure. They come to detach the heart. One of the people of the past, they said, look, the, the example of the human being in relation to the world is like a boat in relation to the sea. A boat is built to travel the waters. That's the purpose of the boat. You can get a boat and put it on the road, it's no good. It's no longer a vehicle or a mode of transport. On a road, it's no good. On railway tracks, it's no good. It becomes, it fulfills its purpose when you place it in the water. So the boat needs water to fulfill its function. Yet, as the boat needs water to do its thing, to be a boat, to fulfill its destiny, a boat has to also be extremely careful not to allow the water in to it. Because when that happens, then the boat sinks. And then the boat is no good, and everybody on the boat has died or drowned. The human being is created not to be out in the, the a cave somewhere, not to be away from humanity and, and, and the human being and insan mushtaqun min al uns. Insan, the word insan is, is in Arabic taken from the, 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 the word for familiarity in society. The human being is created, Allah created Adam and then made for him his mate. He made for him his partner. Allah says, From his signs is that he made you for you partners of your own kind, of, from your own selves. So that you may find tranquility with them. And with love and mercy he sealed this union, this relationship. So the human being is like his relationship with, his, with the world is like the boat's relationship with water. You need to sail through this world. You need to get active. You need to be working. You need to be supporting your family. You need to be contributing to your society and to your community. You need to be going to the park with your children. You need to be going to the places. The Prophet of Allah says, the Quran tells us, there was no Prophet that came before you illa wa yamshuna fil aswa. They walked through the marketplaces. They, didn't, they weren't so holy and pious, they always stayed shut up in a closet somewhere. Yamshuna fil aswa. They would walk the marketplaces. They used to say about the Messenger of Allah, one of the great things that of his characteristic is, ma kana sahabin fil aswa. He would be in the marketplace, but he wasn't noisy and loud in the marketplace. He would go to the marketplaces and everyone knew him because he was composed. A marketplace is the place of hustle and bustle and jostling and sometimes raised voices and traders trying to sell their wares and, and, and buyers trying to get in there. It's a place of, uh, of activity and uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi would be in the marketplace and he would be in a state of complete composure. So he didn't teach to detach, he taught to engage and then to be dignified and to reintroduce dignity to the world. And so to be in the world like a boat has to sail through the water, you don't disengage, you engage, but you, don't, you absolutely make sure that you don't let the waters or the, the love of the world to seep into your heart. Because when that happens, then the boat has to sink and the human being has to drown. So don't do that. And this is what these days are about. These days of sacrifice, we'll hear, inshallah, about Ibrahim alayhi salam and his wife Hajar and he, their, their, their son Ismail alayhi salam. And these, these are, they are the father of Millatu Abikum Ibrahim. Allah says, this is the tradition of your father Abraham. And he's speaking not just to the Arabs because they were descendants of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He's speaking also to Banu Israel, to the Jews and the Christians. This is your tradition. Don't denounce it. Don't turn your back on it. Because Muhammad is an Arab. The tradition is the tradition of Abraham, of Ibrahim. And it is a tradition for the world. When the Prophet goes up to uh, Al-Mi'raj, 
Every messenger he meets al in, during al uh, the, the ascent through the heavens, every messenger he meets greets him with Marhaban bin Nabi Salih wal Akhi Salih. Welcome, righteous prophet, righteous brother. There's only two prophets who meet him, greet him with different words. Adam and Ibrahim say, Marhaban lil Nabi Salih wal Ibn Salih. Welcome, righteous prophet, righteous son. He is a son to Ibrahim, as he is a son to Adam And Adam is the father of all of humanity, and Ibrahim is the father of the tradition and the millah. His is a universal message for the entire... It doesn't discriminate black or white. It doesn't discriminate Semite or, or non-Semite. It doesn't discriminate uh, between rich or poor. It is a message for the world. And it is a message, first and foremost, of dedication and love. There's no, there's no other... Everything has a currency. The currency of faith is love. The currency of all, everything else, the prayer and the fasting and the worship and uh, the social dynamic and the economic uh, factors, all of these other things build on the fundamental platform of devotion to the Creator. And Ibrahim salam, his life is a testament to that. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless us in these days to come. These days of Dhul Hijjah, even if we're not able to make a journey to his house, we make a journey to him. Even sat here, the Prophet said, "Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 'Man kanat hijratu ila Allahi wa Rasuli, fa hijratuhu ila Allahi wa Rasuli.' Anyone who seeks God and His Messenger as he journeys out, he will find God and His Messenger as he journeys." And he said that to a people who had to leave Mecca, the house of Allah. They were leaving Mecca and going further away from it, and the Prophet reassured them, "With every step you may be taking away from the physical house of Allah, you become closer to Allah." You can travel away from Mecca and come closer to Allah if your circumstances demand that and if your heart desires that. And servants of Allah, these really we have to think about where we want to find ourselves when the soul has to move away from this body and the body is laid to rest in the ground. This is a very temporary arrangement, this uh, coexistence of soul and body on earth. It's a very temporary arrangement. You're a tenant. We are tenants on this. We're lodgers. This will come to an end, your tenancy agreement will run out, and then it's time for the soul to do its thing. And any attachment to anything else which got in the way of building and forming and, and developing a strong relationship with the Creator is going to be a source of sorrow for us. And we have to think about our children and our children's children. We live in a world which glorifies materialism above all else. And this is what young children are bombarded with. These are days in which to seek to recapture some of that. Let our houses, let our homes, let our majalis and our places of gathering become places where God is glorified. Whenever we get together, this is a time to mention and to glorify Him. The Prophet of Allah, whenever he sat down, he said, any time two people sit and they don't remember Allah, that, 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 that meeting will be something that they regret on, on the final day. We get together, meet upon Allah, and then depart upon Allah, and greet each other with a salam. Aqulu qawmi hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'kfiruhu wa nasta'kfiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Man yahdihi allahu fala mudilla lahu wa man yudlilhu fala hadiya lah. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wa ahdahu la sharika lah. وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز واهتدى ومن يعصيهما فإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا عباد الله رحمكم الله إن ربكم يأمركم بأمر البدء فيه بنفسه وثنى بملائكته المسبحة بقدسه وثلث بكم تكريما وتشريفا وإعزازا فقال عز من قائل مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم فصل وسلم وزد وبارك على حبيبك وخير خلقك نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحابته وأزواجه وذريته ومن بهداهم اقتدى إلى يوم الدين وجعلنا منهم يا رب العالمين اللهم ارحم المسلمين والمسلمات اللهم نفس كرب المؤمنين اللهم نفس كربنا وفرج همنا وفك أسرنا 
واشف مريضنا وعافه بتلانا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ارحم أهل مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم تغمدنا برحمة منك وفضل يا الله اللهم اللهم خذ بنواصينا وبقلوبنا إليك اللهم خلصنا من كل ما من كل ما يهجرنا عنك يا رب العالمين اللهم خلصنا من كل ما يلهونا عنك يا رب العالمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن ربكم يأمركم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة والف وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله الجليل يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم وقوم إلى صلاتكم رحمكم الله